to watch more. Filmed as we take a deep breath <gasps> after the main show. Here we put Martin's encyclopedic knowledge to the test as the audience ask him questions sight unseen. Plus, we have a style challenge for Justin and Colin to see if a price makes a difference when it comes to clothes. So, Martin, first of all, what did you think of the show? Well, I like the show. I was £1,600 savings on childcare. Ooh. Wow. I mean, wow. You weren't expecting that much, were you, Pam? No, no. Not even close. I mean, it was just massive. Very frustrated we didn't get to those freebies, though. That happens in telly sometimes. Should we do them now? Yeah, do it now. All right, first one. If you apply for the Lloyds TSB American Express card, specifically on the airmiles.co.uk website, then you spend a tenner on the card. So remember, you just spend a tenner and normal spending, pay it off in full. You'll get 1,500 air miles. Now, that is enough for a free return flight to Europe on British Airways or two free return... Yeah, look, it's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Or two free flights to Europe, to, to Paris or Dublin and back. The only proviso, the only proviso is you've got to book one night in a hotel on via air miles. Now, that's a little bit more expensive than normal, so you just book a night on air miles, then book the rest of your stay somewhere else. Quite easy, and it more than makes up, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but you've got the cost of the flight. It's easy, simple as that. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Second one, spend 250 quid on EasyJet, so just do your normal day-to-day -day spending, pay it off in full, and you get 40 quid credit there, and that can be used on flights, taxes and charges, car insurance, travel insurance, easy. All the details on the website, as usual, 5.tv forward slash it pays to watch. Well, listen, I'm glad oh, we got those now. in. I know, I know. You've got that off your chest. Thank you. Any other questions from today's, about today's show from the audience? Go on, don't be shy. Stick your hands up. Go oh, on. No, they've all got... Actually, <laughs> Colin, and you had a question on the childcare vouchers. You two, didn't you? Yeah, I was just interested, because I've got lots of nephews and nieces in the family, and I wondered yeah. if there is a, an age restriction for that. Is it for any kid? Is it 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, or just 15. minors? The age restriction is 15, and the real key with that is... If you're paying and it's a registered childminder, it's got to be registered. You, you can't, family can't do it unless they're registered childminders. Sure. Then, yeah, if you're paying for a babysitter or summer school via a registered childminder, then absolutely you can use yeah, a childcare voucher. The savings for it. are amazing. I mean, sixteen hundred pounds to anybody's a lot of money every year, particularly if you're trying to raise kids. So well done. Mm. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, you're all going to go and do it in there. What about the freebies? Who's going to have a go at the freebies? <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> oh, you're meant to go over there, aren't you? Not me. <laughs> The flights to Europe, definitely. That, that's brilliant, isn't it? Very yeah, it's good. stunning. There's another one, actually, the BMI card, which allows you business class flights to, say, Ooh. Russia or Turkey. But yeah. it's a slightly different deal, and you've got to pay taxes and charges, and taxes and charges on those type of flights can be 150 quid. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance. You can go in luxury, but you're still paying, or you can pay absolutely nothing and go to anywhere in Europe for free. Just do it. It's not bad, is it? Now, I think Hold this on, lady I... has got a question. Ooh, I've Ooh. got one over here. You go first. Spoiled now. Uh, come forward, love. What's your name? Julie, I just wanted to know who the cheapest gas supplier is at the minute. There is no answer. There is no absolute... Answer. No, no, but don't worry. The fact is, wherever you live and how much you use is what determines who your cheapest okay. supplier is. So I can't suddenly say PowerGen's cheapest for all of you, because it isn't. It may be cheapest for some in some areas. All you do, you go to one of those comparison sites. I mentioned them earlier. Better if you can go on the web, because then you can get the cash back, or you can go get the, the free crate of wine, 12 bottles of wine, six red, well, six hey. right. Yeah, hey, <laughs> Rick's going in on that. You put your... Five minutes. Five minutes. Have you ever switched before? No, we haven't. We live in a rented house, so we can't switch so all who the pays time. The, who pays the gas and electricity bill? We do, bill? but it's So in... what is your excuse that you live in a rented house? <laughs> well, it says in the contract you can't change without the permission of the landlord. Contact your landlord. Oh, do you know what? Who's your suppliers? Are you on British Gas for Gas? No, I'm Southern Electric for both. OK, that... OK, that's interesting. That means your house has switched before. What never switching means, technically, is you're on British Gas for Gas on the standard tariff and your regional electricity company for electricity. You have switched before, so I would guess when you do it, you'll probably find savings in the region of 10 to 15%, maybe. How much are you paying? Um, I don't know. How much is the last bill? No idea. Can't remember. Well, a typical <laughs> bill's about £1,000 a year, so we talk about 150 quid savings. Simple it's as good, that. Yeah. Kapam, you had a quick question here as well. Ruth, can we um, have the mic? We might just... have to come back to that one. I think we're going to Colin and Justin now. Are we? OK. Yes. Come, I will oh, come back to you later, Pamela. All right, then. Um, Colin, All you just... Yes. How did you find that? Were you shocked, you two? Yeah, I mean, come on. 
The savings that we're talking about here today are big amounts of money and anything that you can do to save cash is obviously going to be good news. We're just blown away, particularly the, the child credits. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing, though, you really have to reiterate the fact, you know, there are these fabulous sweeteners that obviously encourage people to take out these credit cards and you get your free flights, but then suddenly you find that you're in Berlin for a weekend with a credit card in your hand and you think, let's just <laughs> spend it. Well, you know? now, let's remember, the key to doing these freebie deals is that you spend up to the trigger point and then you cancel it. OK. That's the point. Mm -hmm. It's not about giving them your money. Money. It's in fact, it's across it's subsidy. Said than done, isn't oh no, it? it's not. No, no, no. This one. If you're going for the freebie, you get it. Remember, three of those freebie cards require you simply to do any spending. The, the, the apple Mars or the bar, bar of chocolate. Oh, sure. You do that. You get. You wait till you get your freebie, and you cut the card up and cancel. If you wanted to use a card for spending on, they're certainly not the right cards in sure. many cases. Not in every case, they're not the right ones. What about your credit card saving though? This cashback card, twelve hundred yeah. pounds a year. That's. Phenomenal, you know, absolutely phenomenal. We, we try and be very, very careful with the way that we use our cards and pay everything off, and we try and be as clever as we possibly can be, but if you can find 1,200 quid in there that we can save, I'll have that, thank you and very that's much. That's interesting, because you think you're doing the right thing by actually not having credit. You know, we actually um, settle our cards and at you the are. end of every month. Absolutely. I'm certainly not saying you shouldn't have credit. What I am doing is the point about that your card... This is how it works. This is the sneaky stuff. I think you'll quite like this. When you spend on your card... The retailers have to pay the credit card companies a whack. Okay. That's what happens. So it might be 0.1% of what you spend, it might be up to 1% of what you spend. So the credit card companies are still making money from you, even though you're paying off in full at the end of the month. Now, what we're effectively doing by giving you a cashback card is we're giving you that money. Mm. Right? Instead of the credit card company, you're taking that money. So they're probably not losing on you. They're just not making on you anymore. Still want you to pay it off in full, buy right direct debit, so there's no cost. Just a different card. That's it. I just yeah. want you to use a different card. Twelve hundred pounds. Yeah. I spoke to you before we got on air. How big's your mobile bill? Oh, do you know? I was going to ask you this. We've got a problem by our own um, kind of description with our mobile bills. We were initially paying. Now this is frightening. A thousand pounds a month for our calls, and it but, is staggering, but we're but, phoning a lot. In fairness, but, we're phoning but, but, from but, either side of the Atlantic. And, no, 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 but then we changed our plan. I we love did. this, because you're always quite open and you're always defensive. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Then yeah. we did the Martin Lewis thing. Yeah, we, yeah. we shopped around, you know, we went to our provider and we changed our plan, and we actually halved our bill, like, and more than that. So £500. We took it to about £500. Can you better that? But, oh, come I'm on, sure love, we could better that. But... Our, our problem is that when we're abroad, you know, like, we were in Mauritius because we were writing our next book, and we were on the phone every single day and that bill was going back Where were up you phoning? To, back to the UK. And you were using a UK card for doing... Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah OK, yeah. what you need to do, I mean, the, the, the special way would you be get, you get a phone, you unlock your phone, which you can do for free on the internet, and you go and buy a Mauritian SIM card, but that's going to annoy you too. I know what you're like, <laughs> right? So I would get something like a SIM for travel which is a universal SIM card, so they can use it in any country at much, much cheaper prices Ooh. than using a standard SIM card. Now, if you're going in Europe now, it's roaming, so it's not so cheap anymore. If you're going outside Europe, get a SIM for travel. When you're abroad, put that in your phone. Although, again, I don't know why I have the impression that you two don't like any hassle. Am I wrong? We like it to be as easy as we possibly okay. can. So this is what you do. You go and buy yourself a cheap pair as you go phone. You unlock that, you put the SIM for travel in there, then when you're abroad, people can call you on your phone, which isn't cheap, oh, I know that. but you can then call them back on the cheap phone, right? Because calling them back on the cheap phone is a fraction of the cost of receiving a call. I think you'd probably take off 75% of your bill doing that yeah, you're probably when you're abroad. Whoa. Sim for travel, one of the one of the all using. Sure. There are quite a few of them. It depends where you're going, which That's one's cheaper. That's definitely an area that we're that we're definitely spending an awful lot of money and calling, <laughs> communication, keeping in touch is our biggest biggest uh, expenditure. Isn't it bizarre though? You I mean people, you give you a really good answer, and yeah, I mean the great British public, and, and you know, and I think we're included in this. You go, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes along and you go, do you know what, I'm going to do that the day Are you going to go and get cash ices then? Uh, yeah, I think I probably am. And I think we'll, we'll definitely look into that. And, and you're right, we get advice from people in all walks of life and we don't often act on it. This time, money counts. It's paid to watch for us. I want to kind of get those benefits well, back. I, I mean, I'd love it because you're both entitled to a cash ice allowance. And, it end, you know, April the 6th, we're in a new year. So if you don't do it now, you lose that cash ice allowance. Colin and Justin and their finances, thank you so much, oh, guys. Question, Pam. I promised you a question. I didn't let you down. <laughs> Here he comes. You. What do you want to ask him? Sorry, Pam. Um, I just wondered whether you can consolidate your air miles from taking out the credit card with your air miles that you get from 
being with Southern Electric and Tesco's and so on? Well, no, first of all, the, well, we Tesco... have all separate accounts. OK. You can generally consolidate air miles, but if we're talking this specific freebie credit card, because the spending is conditional that you book a hotel through oh, the air miles right. website, it works in a slightly separate way. In general, though, if you are if you're getting air miles through Tesco's, that means you're converting into Tesco Club Card points and converting again into air miles, mm. which is absolutely fine. They can be brought together with other air miles. But what what I'm worried about in your question is that you're not confusing. Air Miles, which is a specific brand of reward, yeah. with things like BA Miles or Frequent Flyer Miles. Right? Okay. They're all different schemes. So you certainly can't mix your Air Miles right, with your right. BA Miles and your BA Miles with your, I don't know, um, American Airlines Frequent Flyer Miles. They're all different schemes. That you can't do. Pam, thanks. Martin, Thank thanks for clearing that one Pleasure. up. Now, earlier, Martin challenged Colin and Justin to a fashionista test. Our models are on standby, so off we go. Right. Now, what this is all about, you two style gurus, plus I've brought Anne in, who is a money saver here. So I'm going to put a money saver up against the two of you, but you're playing singly. I have our models, who are our wonderful runners, Charlie and Vicky. If you would like to come in, ladies, thank you very much. <laughs> Round of applause, please. Now, if you take a look at them, sunglasses, bag, jacket, shirt, jeans and shoes. Each one, one is more expensive than the other. To make it really difficult for you, it's not a question of something being high-end designer versus high street. Sometimes it'll be that. Sometimes it'll be high street versus cheaper high street. I've got you. And I want you each to pick out which one you think is the more expensive item. Okay. Who's wearing... So can we go for shoes first? If we can have a look down there. There's Vicky on the left and Charlie on the right. Okay. What do you reckon? Well, do you know, Martin, I always look at accessories as a means by which to kind of define which is a more expensive look because shoes and bags, I think, are generally harder to fake. Now, <laughs> put my money where my mouth is here. I think that our gorgeous girl directly there is wearing the more expensive so shoes. You're, you're voting for Vicky in yeah. the more expensive I shoes. I think Vicky is the more expensive shoe. It's a lovely foot, Vicky, I'm not going to lie. I would agree <laughs> with that. I, th I think Vicky's in the more expensive shoe as well. Um, yeah, I think so too. Vicky, so you've yeah. all gone for Vicky in the more expensive shoe. Well, I have to say, Charlie is wearing a pair of Peacock shoes at £15, whereas Vicky is wearing a pair of Nine West shoes at £65. Oh. So that's a point for all I'll three of you there. Good, <laughs> all, <laughs> all right, next we're going to go for jeans. Okay. Okay. We've got the two pairs of jeans over there. Turn round. Yes, can we have a twirl, please? Let's Thank see you your bum, much. girls. <laughs> There's a question you never thought you'd hear us ask. <laughs> right, OK. Why don't you go first, Colin? <sighs> now, let me see. Left, right. Can you turn round and lift up the back of your jacket? <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, I'll start yodelling. Only you two could have got away <laughs> with asking that. I'm so glad I didn't ask it. I think they're the more expensive pair. Who? Uh, the girl on the right. The girl on the right wearing the more expensive pair. What do you think, Justin? I'm going to agree, but before I completely agree, could I just see the, the detail work in the pockets in your trousers, please? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that jean has got less detail work and less cut work going on, so that is the more expensive jean. And yeah. what do you think? I think the ones on the left. You think the ones... So you've all gone for the ones on the left. Difficult. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry, you've gone for the ones on the right. Sorry, Charlie there has gone the ones on the right, but both of you, the other two, think Vicky is wearing the more expensive jeans. No, 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 no. I think those are the more expensive I'm... ones. Sorry, I'm confusing myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think yours are the more expensive ones. Uh, so do I. Yeah. And I think the ones on the left. Oh, okay. No, descent. Now, interesting. Was it difficult this? <laughs> Because well, one pair of jeans costs eight quid, the other pair costs 120 quid. Wow. Ooh. Are we right or are you right? <laughs> oh, Martin, tell us. Come on. Well, I'm going to tell you, oh! I have to say that you two picked Charlie, who's over on the right over oh. there, and, yes, Charlie is in the more expensive pair of jeans. Okay. And the boys are beating you, but it's the difference. Is it worth 112 quid well, extra? I don't know if it is or if it isn't. I think there's a real return from wearing something gorgeous that you know you've really saved up for, and it's a real luxury. I love jewellery, so I always wear really good jewellery, but I'll buy a budget pair of jeans or I'll buy an expensive shirt. What do you but, but, no, but come on, surely the thing is, you know, are you buying fashion or are you buying practical clothing? You know, and if you're buying a pair of jeans to actually fend off the cold, then buy an eight pound pair. But if you're buying them because you actually want the feeling that comes from that label from the designer, you want to be Victoria Beckham, <laughs> then oh, buy them. Oh, 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 take ones. me now! <laughs> look, look, fashion. These... Fashion is something invented by the clothing industry uh -huh. so that we can't have wardrobes throughout our lives. So that when you're growing and you've got no money, what you've actually got to do is go and spend 
spend your cash again and again because clothes only last six weeks. Fashion is an invention of the corporate world, not the real world, and we shouldn't be driven by following it like corporate <laughs> mammon. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, buy your jeans into charity shop and you get vintage 501s for six pound ninety nine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's just yeah. do shirts. And sunglasses for the moment. Who's going to cheaper? Right, do you want to go first, Justin? OK, could you pop your glasses down, please, girls? Can I go for a slightly closer look, Mark? No. Because I can't see a thing. No, because here. one of them's got a brand on it, so I'm not allowing you. OK. Mm. Now, the glasses, I'm going to... I'm going to stumble on the glasses because there's such a manufacturing drive towards making cheaper glasses that look every bit as good. I'm going to go with the blouses first, and I think you... Can you open, there... the, open your tops? Thank you very much. <laughs> oh my gosh. Keep the blouses on, though, please. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you again, your, your blouse is well cut. It's cut slightly in the bias, and there's a really nice gathering at the bottom, so I think there's a bit more work in that mm. blouse than that blouse, which, no offence, I think looks a little bit budget. So yours is the more expensive blouse over here. Glasses, I'm a bit confounded, but I'll say one of them is the more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I disagree with you on the blouse. I think the, the one on the left-hand side, as we look at it, is the more expensive so blouse. Got the more and I think the glasses on the right are more expensive. Ooh. Blimey, I'm stumbling on the glasses. And I'm going to say that the, the blouse on the right is more expensive and the glasses on the right are more expensive. Mm. So we're all different. We're all that different. <laughs> the blouse on the right... Uh -huh is the most expensive at £35 compared to the £10 one on the left. Were well, you wrong, Colin? So you're wrong, there you a go. A good buy for fashion, You see, Anne and I, <laughs> Anne and Justin knew exactly what they were now, talking about. Now, you couldn't about. tell the difference on the sunglasses. I but could. Well, go on, which one was more expensive for you? I went for, for the right-hand side. I'm going to go you left. Went, so you um, went for the right-hand yeah. side pair of £5 sunglasses from Peacocks, not the £65 more expensive pair on there. So you were wrong on that, you didn't even know. And let's just do the bag before we finish. Okay. Can we see the bag? Um, I'll give you a clue. One costs £951, one costs £75. Pounds. Cheap bag, cheap bag, no, cheap yeah. bag, expensive yeah, okay. bag. No, that one's expensive. Cheap. Chunk, no, Chunky Zips, that's... Uh, who's, that's by, it's not Dior, it's some... Um, that's a Chloe bag and that's a lookalike. Go and stand by the bag you think's cheapest, oh the most goodness. expensive, and go and stand by the one oh. you think's most expensive. This is oh, a this chunky. One. Right, no, one. go on, Anne, have a quick go. <laughs> I love this one, thanks. Nicola Whitford. No, no get, make your decision. Yeah, zombie bag. Go, do it. I have to tell you, you have the £951 no! pound bag, you have the £75 pound bag, and that is why fashion should never be listened to that much. The two, well, two of the top stylists, famous in this country, famous in Canada, <laughs> but they didn't get them all right anyway. Colin fashion. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chats. Wonderful to have you in the studio. Thanks, Thank you so much. I'm glad we saved some money. Yeah, See you soon. Thank you, Anne, as well. Thank you, Bella. Where's my camera? There he is. Handbags at dawn, that was. Time for more questions from the audience now. Who has got a question? If you go off over there... Where's Sarah? Thanks, Anne, if you come back Sarah, in. Sarah, 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 hi. Hello. Um, what would you like to ask Martin? Where's the best place to invest a large sum of money at the minute that you can get out easily and I don't want to gamble on the stock market? Well, the first thing to say is your question's wrong. Oh. Because you don't mean to invest, you mean to save. Right, investing is when you put your money in somewhere and you're willing to take a risk to get more growth. Well, in your question, implicitly, you said to me, I don't want to put it on the stock market, I want it to be safe and I want to get instant access. Yeah. That's a savings product. And it's actually, it's a very common mistake that people make to confuse the two. I get a lot of questions, people saying, I want to invest money, but they actually mean to save. So, where's the best place to save? How much was it? I can't say that. OK. Are we... <laughs> okay. The first place you always put savings is in a cash ISA. You're allowed to put right now £3,000 a year in a cash ISA. It'll be a little bit more next year, which starts on the tax year, April the 6th. There are two accounts competing. You've got um, iSave offering 6.1%. You've got Alliance and Leicester offering 6.25%, but that's got a bonus on the account. If you're looking for a longer term, I'd go with the iSave one at 6.1%. For the remainder of your cash, you want to put it in the best possible savings account, which right now has just changed to Calp thing that we talked about in the money-saving news. 6.5% clean. If you've got more than £1,000, you can put it in there. It's got a rate guarantee until February 2012. It'll pay 0.3% above base rates. Absolutely great account. But, because you wouldn't tell me how much money you're talking about, OK, 
If it were above £35,000, mm -hmm. like any UK account, your money is only protected for the first £35,000. After that, it doesn't have the financial services compensation scheme protection on it. So if you wanted to do belt and braces, personally, I don't think it's worth it, but if you wanted to, you would then have to find another top-paying account to put each chunk of £35,000 in. Did okay. I answer that? Yeah. Good. Okay. Right. Let's try and get a couple more questions in quickly. Where's Radika? Yeah. Hey, Radhika, come Radika. forward. Um, what do you want to ask Martin? Um, does it work out cheaper to use the same uh, company for the telephone, broadband and the TV package? Telephone, broadband and TV. I'm afraid my answer is another yes and no. Right. Right, it depends exactly how you're using it. TV's the one that can really cost here. Right. So, what TV are you thinking about? How many of these channels are you actually looking to watch? Um, well, we've got the Sky, like, a family package. Right, and do you watch all the channels? Um, no. <laughs> OK, the first thing anybody does who's got a digital television set is order what you actually watch and don't pay for anything that you don't watch. Right. So many people don't do that. If you're on Sky, they do have a combination package there. The first thing on any of these companies that you do is you tell them, I'm going to ditch and switch and leave unless you give me a better price, which right. will knock your price right down. Okay. If you actually wanted to talk about the cheapest model, what you'd do is you'd probably get Talk Talk for phone calls and broadband, which yeah. is 18 pounds a month, including free evening and weekend calls and your broadband and your line rental. Right. And you go and buy yourself a free view box for 20 quid. Okay. That's a lot cheaper than any bundle package, yeah. but it depends on the channels you want. Okay. Fantastic. One last question. Where's Dawn? Hey, Dawn. Um, what do you want to ask Martin? Well, there are so many different price comparison sites on the internet. Which would you recommend? Um, none of them. <laughs> and, and the answer is very deliberate. First of all, I don't believe in credit card price comparisons for anybody who doesn't really know what they're talking about. But this is how it goes. I would always use Money Supermarket for loan comparisons, but I wouldn't touch them for life insurance. Then I'd go for Cavendish Online, but I wouldn't touch them for going for an ISA because I would an ISA or pension because I think Hargreaves Lansdowne is better. That's the big problem. As this week, we're not going to be on five. I can say that's why if you go to MoneySavingExpert.com, it'll tell you if you should be using a comparison service and which one's right for whatever you're choosing to do. Products, Simple as that. Yeah. There Dawn, we go. thanks That's so it. much. That's all we've got time for. Loads of stuff covered there. And, of course, you can look at articles and links in more detail on our website, 5.tv forward slash it pays to watch. Next week, the big one, PPI reclaiming. If you've been missold a loan or a credit card insurance, you might not even know it, you can get an absolute fortune back. I said it before, £27,500, the biggest reclaim yet. But we've had one of £26,000 too. And what's that on? PPI, payment protection insurance, loans, credit cards, anyone who's got one in the last six years, simple as that. Fantastic. I'll also be meeting a mini Martin, a young chap who's been bitten by the money-saving bug and blags loads of stuff from big companies, which he then sells on, making a profit. Hurrah! Profit. I love to hear it. And, of course, we've got the weekly money-saving news. Who knows what'll be in that? But there could be a thousand other reasons for watching, each one of them a pound. That's why it pays to watch. <laughs>